OK, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Wembley Stadium for this unveiling of our new England senior men's head coach, Thomas Tuchel, who is joined here by FA CEO Mark Bullingham. We'll shortly start with some opening remarks before we open up to a Q&A from the floor. But before we do that, just a few housekeeping rules. We're going to keep it to two questions per person and maximum, please, uh, and also use the microphone available and state the name and organisation you work for before you ask your questions. And at the end, we'll have a short section and bargain until 10.30 p.m. this evening. So I'd like to hand over to Mark Bullingham. Great. Thanks, Andy. This is a really exciting day for the English game. We've, ex we've appointed one of the very best coaches in the world and one of the very best young English coaches as his number two. Our aim is always to win a major tournament. And we believe Thomas gives us the best possible chance to do that at the next Men's World Cup. We had a clear recruitment plan in place before the Euros, and John McDermott and the team developed our ideal profile for an international coach and a short list if we needed it. After Gareth resigned, we executed that plan. We met and evaluated potential candidates. Thomas was absolutely outstanding, providing a really clear vision for the role and how he would work with our players to get the best out of them and to give us the best chance in the World Cup. We were delighted to sign contracts with Thomas last Tuesday, but wanted to wait for the international window to be over before we announced. We're also delighted that Ant is joining us as one of the most exciting young English coaches around. Before I pass to Thomas, I'd like to thank Lee Carsley for stepping into the role for six matches. He's handled himself really well, and I'm sure we'll continue to do so. Lee will manage the team for the November international window and then return to lead the under-21s, trying to defend their European Championship title. I would also like to thank Gareth and Steve. The fact that we had such a high level of interest in this role is testament to the foundations they laid over their eight years with us. Thomas, would you like to say a few words? Of course. Thank you, Mark. And hello to everybody. I'm, of course, obviously very excited and honoured to be here today as a new head coach of England. I just uh, had the chance to read a quote from Pelé in the, in the building in Wembley, who said that Wembley is the heart, the capital, and the cathedral of football. And I think he was absolutely right. So I want to take uh, the opportunity to thank uh, the FA, especially Mark and John, for their trust. And I'm very excited to start this journey in uh, January. With, uh, with you, with the staff at St. George's Park and at Wembley, and of course with a very special and exciting group of players to make our dream come true in America. Well, Thomas. Hi. Congratulations. It's Rob Dawson <laughs> from you. Sky Sports. Nice to see you. Look, you've had some huge jobs in football already. Yeah. Is this your biggest challenge? And with that in mind, would it be your biggest achievement if you led England to a, a major title? I understood very quickly that it's a big job. Uh, I think it's always the job you're in is the biggest job that you don't get. And, and it does not make a lot of sense to compare. But um, it feels big and it feels, like I said, uh, like a privilege. Um, it is very new because I come from, from club football, so the rhythm, the, the responsibility, the role is a new role, which is also very exciting. I was uh, very open for that and, and liked the idea of it. Uh, once Mark and, and John made uh, clear to me that uh, this job is about football, I, um, uh, we never lost the momentum. And once I made a, a time frame up in my mind, from January to, to the World Cup, I, I felt already excited and that it, it, it suited my, my, my passion and, and uh, my, my strive to, to, to push this group of players and, and to be part of this, this federation with such a, a strong record in the last tournaments to, to push it uh, over the line and, and to try to put a second star on the shirt. Good luck. Um, Mark, your statement was... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. <laughs> it was a little bit flippant, that, wasn't it? I beg your pardon. <laughs> um, Mark, your statement was unequivocal, really, in saying that you, your, your entire criteria, your primary criteria, was to appoint somebody that could, could uh, deliver a major, a major trophy. Um, is it an uncomfortable truth for you, though, the fact that, that Thomas isn't English? 
So, Rob, we were always really clear that we wanted the very best person for the job, and we feel like we owe it to the players and the country to give them that support, that leadership in tournaments that will help to get them over the line and give us the best chance of winning a trophy in the Men's World Cup. So we feel we've done that. We feel delighted that Thomas has joined us. Thomas, Dan Rowan, BBC. Um, there'll be many England fans who are very excited about your arrival, given your vast experience, the trophies you've won, your pedigree. What would your message be, though, to those fans who would have preferred the England team to be managed by an English coach? And do you understand that I'm, position? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just have a German passport, but I can just tell them, and I maybe everyone, all of these supporters also felt my passion for for the English uh, Premier League, my passion for the country, how, 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 how I love to live here and how I love to work here. So my memories are on, on the highest level of that, so that played a huge role. Um, and, and hopefully I can convince them and show them and prove them that I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be the English manager. I'm, I will do everything to show respect to this role and to this country. And um, the target for the next 18 months is uh, nothing else. And, and um, the, the biggest one in, 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 in world football, and everyone can be assured of, no, no matter what uh, nationality my passport says. And Mark, if I may ask, you say in your statement you interviewed several candidates. Can you shed any light, a bit more detail on that? For example, how many were any English? Was Lee Carsley ever a realistic possibility? Can you give us any more details about who else you spoke to? Sure, Dan. As you'd understand, the whole process was confidential, and I think I understand at times that might have been frustrating for, for people, but we had to maintain that confidentiality for us, but also really more importantly for the candidates. So I'll say a few things, but I'll hold it at that. So we interviewed approximately 10 uh, people, um, and we did interview some English candidates within that. As to anything further, you wouldn't expect me to divulge any details, really. Uh, Thomas, Steve Scott from ITV News. Um, Chelsea fans will know you very well. Other Premier League fans will know you well, but obviously England fans are a much bigger group than that. So for those who don't know you, what sort of person are you? Can you describe your personality? My personality? Your personality. Well, maybe I try to describe my coaching personality, but I, I think it's, it's pretty obvious. I'm, I'm very emotional and I, I, I love to be, to be, um, I love what I'm doing. I'm, I'm passionate about football. And, um, like, like we said before, this, this task and, and this role, like, just brought the, the young, the young me alive and it brought back the, 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 my, my teenage days like to, to get excited for, for, such a, for such a big task for the three, for the three Lions for, for playing matches at Wembley for, for working with this group of players so everyone can be assured that we will do it with passion and with emotions and uh, we will try to install values and, um, and principles and, and, and rules as, as quickly as possible to, to, make the dream, to make the dream come true first we have to of course, go through the qualification process to the World Cup, but um, it starts for us in, in, in January, and uh, we will dive in completely. Gareth Southgate developed a very specific culture within yeah. the England camp. Will you try and maintain that, or do you think you need to create your own, one that's more aligned to you? No, we will build on it. We will build on it. I think Gareth and DFA did a fantastic job in terms of stability and consistency. Look at the last results in the tournament it's a quarter final semi final and 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 two finals in the last four tournaments it's it's outstanding the under 21s win titles the the younger teams are in in the competition to win titles the women team uh, wins titles so we are there i think the federation is there and it was a, a big part of taking that job i am curious i want to learn i will have a different schedule than in club football but i it was a big part uh, that, that the, the knowledge and the quality of, of the federation to, to have that in, at my side and, and uh, to combine it with my ideas, with our ideas. Um, so we will build on, on everything that uh, Gareth built and DFA built, and hopefully we can, we can add a little bit of extra to, to get it over the line. Thomas, welcome and congratulations. Thank you. You took an English team, Chelsea, to a Champions League final against Manchester City, who were overwhelming favourites going into that, and won. What does the prospect of 58 years of hurt mean to you? And are you relishing 
putting a second shirt star on an England shirt? Like I said, I, 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 I got very the Mark and John um, made very clear that it's about football, and this excited me very quickly because I was not sure before we had this first talk if this is a role for me like in international football because this is, the schedule is very different from, from club football. But then we found uh, so many similarities and so many things that, 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 that suited my, my approach and my hunger to, to, to achieve uh, special things. I always wanted to come back uh, to England. That was my big goal. If I have the the, the best memories of, of the country, of the league and of the players, the attitude towards the game, the attitudes from the supporters who um, uh, that shapes the players and the, the character of the players was uh, one of a kind. And um, that's why the, the offer came in the absolutely right time. We kept the momentum in, and within weeks we found, uh, we found uh, a, a vision to share and, and a project and an adventure that, that I'm, I'm very happy to be, to be a, a big part of. And now I have to live up to it, of course. And, and um, I know that there are some trophies missing um, in, in the Federation. And of course, I, wanna be, I, I, I want to help to make it happen. You just said in a social media post, you said that you would like to put another star on our shirt. Yeah. You're already pledging your allegiance, as okay. it were. Uh, <laughs> a big question for Lee Carsley had to answer. Will you sing the national anthem? The national Does an England man <laughs> manager need to? <laughs> Yeah, I understood from Mark that it's a personal decision, first of all, if you, if you sing it, and there were managers who sang it and, and others who, who didn't. Uh, I have not made my decision yet. I want to be very honest with you. It, uh, your anthem is very moving. The English anthem is very moving. I experienced it several times here at Wembley and um, even out with the players in the FA Cup final. So it was very touching. <clears throat> no matter what decision I, I will take, we have a bit of time until March. I, I, uh, I will always show my respect to my new role, to the country, and, and of course to a very moving, me, to a very moving anthem. But um, as this is a new subject, I will take a little bit time for, for this decision. Just a reminder, state name and organisation. Uh, Rob Harris from Sky News. Uh, welcome back. Congratulations. Thank you. Are you prepared for the pressure and intensity that the England job brings? And was that something that was on your mind in the past, perhaps managers decided not to take this role because of the spotlight on their private life and things like that? This is always the last thing I think about and, um, because uh, I'm, I'm up for the pressure on the sportive side. I'm up for the big challenge. I'm, I'm, I'm up for the task. I'm up for these uh, 18 months to work with this group and be part of uh, this amazing federation. So these are all the reasons to, to jump in. The, the pressure on the personal side or the pressure that, that, that comes from, from media and that could arise if things don't go so well is never part of the, of the decision-making and, and I don't feel it so much. I feel it, of course, then in the process, but it's always, um, yeah, it's always a privilege and, and, and my love and my passion for the game is, is always much more than, than the downside of it. And from watching England and at recent tournaments, how do you think you can make the difference and turn this team into trophy winners? I think, first of all, they are there. We are there. The players uh, proved, the group of players proved that, that they are there. Uh, the consistency of quarterfinals, semifinals, finals is, is, uh, is impressive. And it shows that uh, we have players who compete in the strongest league in the world, day in, day out. So we have the ingredients. Um, and uh, we, we, we fully trust that this, is a, that this is the moment to install maybe also from club football um, patterns, behaviors, um, um, principles that can maybe help to, to, push the, to push the team over the line. We will need luck. We will need the momentum. We will, be, we will need to be lucky to not have uh, injuries and, and, and so on and, and little decision within the games. That is a given. But we feel confident to, to, to add something from, from our experience in club football that can maybe help. But uh, most important is to, to, even if we speak out now very openly what the target is about the second star, we have to prove ourselves um, all the time. You're a national player every single day. I will be a national coach every single day and not only when I campus. So we have to live up to these standards, and I'm, but I'm very confident that everybody is used to that. So this is what I demand from myself, 
and uh, then we need to show it in qualification and, and build an atmosphere with the supporters and the country that extra, extra special things can happen. Rob Brimby, ARD Television, German TV's London Bureau. Um, wow. Es gibt Leute, eine Frage auf Deutsch, wenn es möglich ist. Es gibt okay. Leute, die sagen, dass der Nationaltrainer muss aus England kommen. Uh, wie können sich solche Vorurteile über, überwinden? I think they have a point. Oh, you want to translate? Uh, shall I translate? English, English, shall I translate? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> English questions from now on. But if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think every. Everyone has its opinion, and I can understand even an, an opinion when someone says, like, I, I would fancy an English coach more for, for, for the English team. I can understand it, but um, I think uh, we deserve a, a fair chance. We deserve the credit for, for having a good record in the country, for never being shy of uh, how much we love to live in the country and how much we enjoy to uh, work with the players in Premier League. So... Um, maybe this counts a little bit for 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 a, a, a British uh, edge on, on on my German on my German uh, passport, and so we will try to convince them by results and by the way we play. In English, then uh, Gareth Southgate was described as by many people as uh, sympathetic, human, and emotionally intelligent. How would you describe yourself? I think we're all human. I mean, we're all human, and, uh, and uh, this is a, a big part of the job. I think, like I said, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I am uh, impressed of, of the record that, that uh, Gareth provided with this team, and uh, I am very well aware of uh, what he built together with Mark and John uh, in the Federation as a foundation. And now it's on us to, to, to leave our own marks, to leave our own footprints, and uh, yeah, we will try to, to take the next step from there. Hi, Thomas. Um, congratulations. Um, it's been widely reported that you've signed an 18-month contract. Is that true, firstly? And secondly, if so, how do you feel about potentially only having one shot at a tournament? Well, let's see. Let's see. It's 18 months, and then we agreed to sit together, and then we, we, we see. I mean... Um, I have good uh, experience with 18 months, personally. <laughs> Unfortunately, also, sometimes I'm working on my long-term game, but uh, um, you, you never know. Um, the point was, in this particular case, that it was important uh, for me to, to, to have a frame around it, because it's a little bit a step into the unknown for me. I am used to work on a daily basis with the staff. I'm used to work with a daily basis on, on, on the team, to have the influence on, on 60, 80 people in a training camp on a, every single day, to be three days a week away on, in hotel rooms and, and, and prepare matches. And, and this will be very different. So like the, the, the last piece of bit for me to, um, to understand that this is something that... that uh, that can really excite me to, to the fullest and, and um, was the time frame of 18 months to not also and, and to also to demand for myself to not lose the focus for all of us. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a good time frame because it will help us to focus. We are focused on the qualification and on the World Cup. It will help us in the nomination process. It will help us in the communication towards the players within the staff. So I think this is now very streamlined and very easy to explain. We are here to, to, to work on the best possible outcome for, for the World Cup 26. And, and then let's see um, whatever comes, comes. You obviously came in at Chelsea and had an immediate impact to won the Champions League in a matter of months. Do, do you think that experience is translatable to England and the time frame you've got now? I, um, I think so, yes, but I'm not fully sure because I have to feel into it. The, 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 um, the schedule will be different, the, the workload will be different, um, but uh, I wanted this, uh, I wanted exactly this once uh, Mark and Sean presented me the opportunity and, and made it very clear that it's about me and that they trust me with this uh, uh, process in, in, in in pushing this team, um, I, I was very happy now to have the chance also to um, to, to learn to learn on this process to to, to have the strong foundation and, and stability and quality of the federation to get better, to get smarter, and um, to um, 
yeah, to, to 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 get better while I'm while I'm on this job. So that this is, was a big part of it. And just for two questions, come across to Henry Winter here, please. We've got time for a few more in this section. So if we can limit it to one question each, that'd be great. Thank you. Hi, Thomas. Henry Winter, World Soccer. First, congratulations. And secondly, you know Harry Kane well. Did yeah. you speak to him before taking the job? And will he remain your captain? I Thank did you. speak to no one. We kept the process very confidential between uh, Mark John and, uh, and uh, me. I did not speak to... Um, to Harry, I didn't speak to Gareth. I also n normally I never do this to get my own feeling for it and, and get my own point of view and let it sink in and reflect on it. So, no, haven't done it yet. Um, you know, it's it's too early to answer these kind of questions. You know how highly I think and feel for 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 Harry and how of a, how how much I fought to bring him to Bayern Munich and uh, so he is um, he is. Uh, already on his way to be a legend in, in English football. And, but now I think it's also very important to, um, to, to give the respect to Lee and, and, and the camp, the upcoming camp in November, to take his, uh, his decisions free and without me interfering. And then the, we will answer this question in latest in March. Hi, Thomas. James Robson, Associated Press. Uh, you said it was a goal to get back to England. Can I ask why? Say again? You said it was a goal to get back to England yeah. for you. Can I ask why you chose England over, say, Manchester United, who you've been strongly linked with? Which would also have been England, but uh, in, but in the country. Why the team? Um, because the, 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 the idea and, and, and the way John and Mark presented it uh, was very fast, very exciting, and it was very confidential, it was very trustful, it was very straightforward, and um, yeah, that was basically a decision for this job and not a decision against anything else. You will understand that I will not comment on, on individual players today and, and for sure not comment, like always, on, on any other clubs. Can I ask, Mark, um, were you rejected by anyone? Or was Thomas the only person you asked, you offered the job to? We we ran a really clear process. We spoke with ten, like I say, approximately ten people throughout the process. Clearly, some were more up for the role than others, but we were absolutely delighted to end up with Thomas, and we believe he gives us the best chance of winning the World Cup. So we believe we've got the best candidate for the job. Okay, sorry to disappoint those waiting. We'll have to end the live section at that. Got two very big games coming up. Um, and secondly. Did the FA make a, 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 um, a prerequisite that you live in England and will you live in England? I love to live in England. I'm, I'm looking forward to living again in England. I, I want to be close to, to Premier League. I want to be close to the majority of the players. But, of course, the schedule will also allow me to be close to my family, my children in, in, in Germany. So, um, but, yeah, I will be in England and most of the time, of course, close here. Do you want me to? You go first. You, you can. No, no. You go first. Uh, look, I think we always said to Lee that he would have three camps, and we were very clear he'd run the Nations League campaign. And I think when we first spoke to Thomas, Thomas wanted to have the singular focus on the World Cup, so it just made sense from both sides, starting the 1st of January. Hello, Thomas. You, 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 you clearly enjoyed your time at Chelsea and had a great yeah. affection for English football. I wonder whether you'd mind spelling out just what it is you like about England... English football, and I don't know, the sort of the it's country and London and the way we do things. Yes, it's the country and it's the humour and it's the, the way of life and it's the attitude from the supporter towards the game and what they demand from the players. And I, 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 I said it many times, I think it shapes the character of the players, how they, how they live their profession, how they, their approach towards training, towards uh, a team effort. And I think it's it's one of a kind. For me, it was a one of a kind experience, and um, to 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 breathe that again is is a big privilege, and I'm 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 very proud, but also of course honored and 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 very happy to to be back and and in such a prominent role, even better. Way of life. Sorry. Way of life. Way of life. 
Yes, I loved it. Of course, I was every three days in a, in a, in a stadium and <laughs> mostly every day on the training ground. But yeah, I, I, I like the way of life. I, like I said, I like the, the, the humor and I, I, I always felt, felt very, very welcome um, uh, here. And that's why I'm very happy to be back. Hi, Thomas. It's Matt Law from The Telegraph. Um, because of your track record um, and because of what Mark and yourself have said about coming in and being very honest about trying to win the World Cup. Uh, I mean, is it win or bust? Is it win or this has been a failure? Uh, I don't know. It depends. It depends. It would be, uh, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's a bit of a, no, it's not a gamble, but uh, we speak it out now very clearly why we are here and, and what we want to achieve. And uh, we are not shy of it. We are absolutely uh, open about it, that it does not help the more often we speak about it, but it should be out out there. And then we can set the standards and we can set the values, set the principles up for it, because then we have to live up for it from January latest uh, for, for 18 months. And then we will, let's judge on it when we have done it. And um, if we decide it was a failure, then uh, we will not continue. If we decide it was not a failure, then we will we will we will continue. Let, let's see. But no one can predict the future. It uh, it feels absolutely right for me to do so. It feels clear. It feels easy to explain. It's uh, and and there's no yeah. It's easy to explain. And when it's easy to explain, it's it's normally good. Thanks, Matt. We'll go across to Charlie there. Thomas, Charlie White from The Sun. What, what, what's the most important thing for you, so results or style of play? Because Gareth Southgate was criticised quite heavily for his tactics, even though England got to the final. La last week, we had Lee Carsley play a real attacking lineup, and England lost to Greece. Where do you balance these things? They have to be balanced, and our style of play has to bring us results. I mean, we play with, uh, we play with players from the best league. We have the, the biggest competition in, in the world. We have... We have a group of, of young, hungry players. We, ha we, are, we are desperate to win a title, so we have all the ingredients. And uh, we, we, I think we, we should try to implement and, and uh, this into our style of play. I think we should play an attacking uh, style of, of football. We should, we should try to, to, to um, emphasize a physical side of the game because this is what English football is all about and this is what excites our supporters and this is what, what, what suits the players. I understand also clearly that we have not a lot of time on the training pitch, but normally I love the two, three days before a match to, to prepare, to do a video session, do a training, do another training and then let's go. So we will heavy, heavily rely on that because we don't have a lot of training time. And that's why it's maybe important um, to have clear messages, to not overcomplicate and, 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 and to find a, a clear structure where we can demand then things from, from the players and where, where they can also show their full potential. And um, yeah, this is then my, my job to find this structure and these demands and then demand it from the players. But but. I think um, we cannot only focus on the results and uh, just hope that they happen. And we cannot uh, hide also behind a certain play of uh, uh, style of play, which does not give us results. It has to go hand in hand. Mark, Dave Kidd from The Sun. Um, is this appointment a damning indictment on English managers, English coaching? And w what about the pathway in terms of coaching and the, I don't know if the England DNA is still a thing? Yeah, no, thanks. I think look, if we look at St. George's Park overall, I think it's been, been a really big success. And I think our pathway is really strong, both from players and coaches' point of view. I think we've got some fantastic young coaches around. And obviously, Anthony is, is one of those. I think any federation in the world who's looking for a uh, hire of a senior manager, clearly you'd love to have you know, five to ten domestic candidates who are coaching clubs in your domestic league challenging and winning honours in domestic league and European football. We're not quite in that place at the moment. And I think as we set out the process, what was our priority? Our priority was to find someone that could give our players the best possible chance to win. So we found that and we've got Thomas and we're delighted with that. I think in the background, obviously, we've got to keep helping our young coaches to get the best opportunities they can, to get best opportunities in clubs. And obviously, we'd love to have more English coaches coaching the Premier League, for example. So I think there's a balance there. Mark, um, 
despite what you just said, surely there's zero sense in delaying Thomas starting until January. You've got two matches next month. Surely there's zero sense in leaving Lee Carsley in the job. Thomas has just said that you get very little time to prepare with your players. Is there a reason that you're not disclosing as to why Thomas is not starting <laughs> until January when you've only got 18 months until the World Cup and you've got a guy here who's not employed at the moment and you're not allowing him to start the job? It's not a question of not allowing. When we first spoke to him, we had our time scale. Thomas had his time scale and it just fitted really well. What was so impressive was his singular focus on us and the World Cup spoke about trying to put a second star on the shirt and that project made sense for it to start on the 1st of January and it made sense for Lee to finish the uh, campaign for Nations League. So we're very comfortable where we are and that's what we'll be doing. Hello, Thomas. Sam Wallace from The Telegraph. Uh, you've been quite critical of international football in the past. I, I'll just read a quote to you. Too many competitions, too many matches, too many friendly matches. That was when you were a PSG manager. Have you changed your mind? Is there still too much international football or, or is it just about right now? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's not enough. No, it's not enough. We need more matches for the national teams. Um, no, it, it correlates even with the, with, the, with the question before. That's why it was for me important to narrow it down into a project and uh, to not lose the focus to, to start in another competition named Nations League and then start into qualification and then go to the tournament. I wanted to have a, a, a clean start. I wanted also to have a bit of time to, to recharge fully and, um, and, and start in January and then uh, start the first camp in, in, in March. And we will have not a lot of time. If you look at the schedule, the schedule, and you hear the voices of the players, and I think they have a reason, the, the, the schedule to end the season with a Champions League final and then go to an international break and then start the Club World Cup is a, is a very, very, very demanding schedule for the players. And we will yeah, try now. On the other, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a new perspective now for me. I'm, I'm glad to have it. It will help me to, to become a better coach. And we will, um, we will um, yeah take this into account when we do our nomination, like, like to, to not overload the players, but at the same time to, to respect also our target, which is uh, to build the strongest uh, group possible to go to America. Hi, hi Thomas, uh, Jacob Steinberg from The Guardian. This is the third time now that you've worked with Anthony Barry. I mean, wh yeah. What is it about your relationship with him? Why does he work so, so well with you? Is it, is it also important for you to have an English person there with you in the group and, and also do you know the do have an idea of the rest of your backroom staff at the moment there will be a few more people in the backroom staff but we will keep the group uh, very small because uh, i want also to 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 acknowledge the the the, the potential and the quality in the, in the staff of, of the FA. So we want to work together and we want to be open, but it is important to have a streamlined process, to have people at your side who, who watch the game and, and the behavior and the patterns through your lens. So Anthony is like uh, the key figure in that as my assistant coach. We work now, like you said, the third in, in, the, in the third third time together and um, I'm very happy to, to have him at my side. He is on top of it English. He's uh, full of energy, full of quality and, and a fantastic coach. On top of uh, it, he has a huge amount of experience in international football, being assistant coach for Portugal, Ireland and, and Belgium. I think that uh, helped me already a lot to understand the schedule better, to understand the nomination process better, to get a feeling for, for what we are talking about here when the, when the talk started. And um, that's why I'm, I'm happy to have uh, um, people like Anthony at my side. And I think this is necessary to to, to influence then all aspects uh, also in St. George's Park in, in our way and to get it streamlined. Hi, Thomas. Miguel Delaney from The Independent. Uh, as an outsider who's now an insider, um, why do you think England have failed to win for so long? And was this part of your assessment, figuring it out? I, I think it's just nuances. I think it's just uh, details. Um, if you lose in, in, in penalties in, in a final, I, who would I be to say I know what you did wrong? Then you're there. You're just there, and uh, you have. They have. We, we or they have been in, in, in two finals, I think, uh, semi-final and quarter-finals. Uh, uh, lost um, each of them very, very closely. Could have gone uh, either way. So 
the, the, genuine, the genuine belief is that we are there, that we are ready, and uh, it's on us to prove it. Okay. Uh, apologies to disappoint all those points you're making, but we're going to conclude the media conference there. You'll get lots of opportunity to speak to Thomas in the future, I'm sure. Uh, but thanks for your time this afternoon. Thank you.